other people and to reach out to others and to connect with others. And for me, the process of growth and self-discovery came more through travelling. I went to Eastern Europe, I went to a small country called Lithuania, which was formerly a part of the Soviet Union. And I lived there for almost a year, I taught English, I worked at a volunteer centre, and I realised for the first time uh, that um, uh, it was possible for me to, to really fit in, because for all my eccentricities, you know, the, the Lithuanians thought it was just part of being British. <laughs> <laughs> so, that was my excuse. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm from Britain. <laughs> so, I grew and I changed and um, I uh, have been to many countries. I've been to the States um, several times since um, the publication of Born on a Blue Day. I've been to, to New York and to, to different states to, to talk about my book, talk about my life. Um, some of you may have seen me on TV over here. Um, and that's always uh, a great experience to be able to share my story with uh, as many people as possible. The book that I wrote, uh, Living in France, my second book, um, which was uh, published, of course, over here as well. It's called Embracing the Wise Sky. And it's a reference to an Emily Dickinson play, um, in which she describes the brain as being wider than the sky. And it's a sentiment that I um, agree with uh, wholeheartedly. And in this book, I want to, wanted to um, look at the differences, um, but more importantly, the similarities between my mind and most other people's. Um, why is it that I can do things that people all can't? Why is it as well that most people can do things, like driving a car, for example, or remembering people's faces, um, even having just met them quite often, that I can't do? In the research that I describe in Embracing the Wide Sky, I talk about intuitions and how um, intuitions, I believe, play a very big role in how we acquire language. There are techniques, they're called mnemonic techniques, they help you to learn things like Richard of York gave a battle in vain for the colours of the rainbow, if you don't know it. Uh, yes, the first letter is the colour. Uh, red, orange, yellow, and so on. Um, and uh, you can do this kind of stuff to learn that um, William Howard Taft came um, before Woodrow Wilson, and uh, Woodrow Wilson came before Warren Gamaliel Harding. And, you know, you can do all this kind of stuff with presidents as well and so on. Um, but it's not very interesting, and it's not very beautiful, it's not very intuitive, and I wouldn't recommend it as a matter of course. It's interesting if you want to learn to memorize deck cards as quickly as possible. But it's not very interesting if you want to acquire genuine wisdom and learning and understanding and to really get at the heart of what a language or a subject has to offer. I want to talk just a little bit about diversity before I finish. Um, coming obviously from what I do, I understand very well the importance of harnessing the world's intellectual capital, no matter where it comes from. Um, different kinds of minds um, should have their place. Um, it should be a truly um, authentic meeting of minds. Um, we're in a young century. There are many things that will happen in the years ahead that we can't foretell, which will be complex and which will be amazing and which will sometimes be frightening as well. And we will need sometimes different ways of thinking um, to solve problems that old ways of thinking have created for us. Well, that's a pretty big number. <laughs> um, and I know that you Americans love everything to be big. <laughs> so I guess that number is red, white, and blue. <laughs>